having sung praise to God, we're going to come before him now in prayer. Let's pray together. God of mercy and grace, we come before you this day to worship you as your people. Though we cannot be together to worship, we know that your Holy Spirit dwells within us and will lift our hearts to Jesus Christ, seated at the Father's right hand. We give you thanks for the homes we live in, for all that you have provided for us each and every day. As we take this time to hear from your word, we pray to you to lift up our voices in song praise to you. And we ask you to strengthen us for our lives of faith as we do so. We live in a world that has put itself at odds with your values. We live in a world where so many do not or so many do not know you or acknowledge you, even though you have made them and you sustain their very life. But before we look down at the world around us, we must confess that even we, your people, at times live lives at odds with your values. We too fail to truly know you or acknowledge you in our lives. You call us to lifelong obedience, day in, day out, listening and obeying your word. We are sorry that all too often we do not listen, we do not obey. Forgive us, we pray, and renew us this day by your Holy Spirit. Change us into the people you wish us to be, for we know it is only by you at work within us that this change can happen. May that change start today as we hear from your word later in the service, as you lead us closer to you by your Holy Spirit, pointing us to Jesus Christ. And so we ask these things relying on his grace and mercy and praying in that name, the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Having confessed our sins to God, Paul says this. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behaviour. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, not move from the hope held out in the gospel. God assures us of pardon, of forgiveness if we confess our sins to him. And so thanks be to God. Our lectionary readings continue in the book of John. We're going to read from John chapter 4, verse 21 through to verse 42. So if you have a Bible there, hard copy or phone or tablet, do look it up and follow along. John chapter 4, verse 21. Jesus said to her, woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, what do you seek or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life. So that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I send you to reap for that which you did not labour. Others have laboured and you have entered into their labour. Many Samaritans came from that town and believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there for two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves and we know that this indeed is the saviour of the world. We thank God for his word. Boys and girls, I want to speak to you for 
uh, a minute or two uh, and before we have our next song and then move in to the video from earlier today. Boys and girls, are you aware that it's the end of November? It's nearly December and December means a very important day. A day that people look forward to every year. A day that some say changed the world forever. But that's enough about my birthday. I'm going to talk about Christmas for a minute or two. Do you know what you want for Christmas yet? Have you decided? Are you still thinking? Are you excited at the thought of what you might get on Christmas Day when you come downstairs in the morning? It's good to be excited about Christmas and, and to look forward to it. And especially this year when things have been so strange and different. It's great to have something exciting to look forward to. Let me ask you though, do you remember what you got for Christmas last year in 2019? I'm sure at this time last year, the end of November, you were really excited about Christmas in 2019. But can you remember what you got? That excitement goes away, doesn't it? The presents you were amazed at on Christmas morning and you were looking forward to, you were excited about last November. Maybe in a cupboard, they may be in a drawer, they may be out in the garage. You might not know where they are anymore. And what about if I was to ask you about the presents you got two Christmases ago? Do you know what they were? Do you know where they are? And what we're about to read in the Bible, from the book of Deuteronomy, God says this about his people. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep my commands always, so it might go well with them and their children forever. You see, God's people had just heard God speak. It had been an amazing experience, an amazing moment for them as God's people. They were really excited. They then promised they would listen and obey God always. Whatever God told them, whatever he commanded them, they would listen and obey. But God knew that that's hard. And as hard as they may try, as much as they may promise it, they would not always love him. They wouldn't always obey him. They wouldn't always respect him. They wouldn't always fear him, which is the word used in the passage. Treat him as they should. And the same is true for us today. As Christians, we want to listen to God and obey him. We want to respect him and fear him, treat him as we should. But it's hard to do, isn't it? It's really hard to do. We can't do it by ourselves. As hard as we try, as much as we want to, we just can't do it. And because God knows it's hard and that we can't do it by ourselves, he gives us help. And what is that help? It's his word, the Bible. God's people in Deuteronomy heard God speak. God spoke to them from the mountain. And when we read the Bible, we hear God speak. When we hear it preached in church, when we hear it in Sunday school, we hear God speak. Now, it may not be as spectacular as a mountain covered in smoke and fire. It may not be an audible voice that we can hear with our ears. But it's the same God speaking to us. It's the same message he's giving us. He's telling us about himself. Reading the Bible is really important thing for Christians, for God's people to do. Reading it each day, little by little, to understand it more and more. That is how we hear God speaking. That's why Sunday School has a Bible story as the main part of the class. It's why church has a sermon as the main part of the service. It's why we should have our Bibles open during those sermons, trying to understand what the Bible is saying. It's why we should read the Bible at home with our family. Not every day is as exciting as Christmas. And after a few months, the excitement wears off. The excitement of the new toys wears off. And a few years later, maybe you can't even remember what you got two or three Christmases ago. But as Christians, we get to do something exciting every single day. We get to hear God speak to us. And that happens when we read our Bibles and we hear the Bible taught. In fact, we're going to do that now. We're going to hear a Bible reading after the next song from Deuteronomy. And then I'm going to explain it as part of the sermon and what that means for us. So the next video that is going to come will be our next hymn, He Will Hold Me Fast. And then we'll go into the video recorded from this morning's service, which will be the tail end of that song again. And then the rest of the service from this morning. God bless.